What's up, guys? Rick here with my top five sleepers for this week's Valspar Championship. That's right. These are golfers a bit further down the board that I think you should give a second look at. They might not be for you. That's okay. But I think they're at least worth a bit more discussion before you set your lineups, before you get your bets placed. And without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to start with Charlie Hoffman, who is 45 to 1. And I think that's about long enough to be considered a long shot or be considered a sleeper, especially compared to what he is doing right now. Since the start of 2021, there is literally no golfer in this field better than Charlie Hoffman. He has got 32 rounds. He is gaining 1.76 strokes per round on average. Nobody has been better during that stretch. And if you look at strokes gained approach, uh, that's where the majority of these strokes are coming from. He is fourth in strokes gained approach. And while it has not resulted in a victory yet, he is finding himself near the top of the leaderboard quite often. A 14th place finish at the Sony Open, a seventh at Pebble Beach, a 10th at the A. API, a top 20 at the players. And then he had that runner up finish at the Valero. And since then he went 18th at the RBC heritage and then drug, uh, drug or dragged Nick Watney around TPC Louisiana to finish 11th at the Zurich classic. So, uh, this is just a really good stretch of golf for Charlie Hoffman. He's doing it in a way that is sustainable from week to week. We know he has won on the PGA tour before. I think he's going to be popular in DFS form. So I'm really looking at probably just getting an outright ticket on him and seeing what happens. But this is a, a really long number on a guy who is literally atop the field in a lot of important metrics for this week. Bubba Watson is 66 to one. And there's something interesting about Bubba. We know he's got winning upside on the PGA tour. We know he's got, what does he have? 11, 12 wins at this point of his career. And he seems to be in a really good mind space. And that's what we saw, especially last week at the Zurich classic, where he finished eighth with his partner, Scotty Scheffler. And he flashed brilliance at times. And what we've seen from uh, Bubba Watson over the last couple of months is this Tita green game that at, when it gets high, hot, uh, he can be the best tee to green player in the field. Now he hasn't shown that as much in the 2021 calendar year, but if you go back a little bit further than that, you're able to see the upside and he's tapped into it just a few times recently. And I think he's one of these golfers that when he gets to a course that he likes, he tends to thrive there. And he's finished fourth at this event. He finished fourth in 2019, the last time this event was played. And I'm just sitting here looking at this 66 to one number for a guy who has won as often as Bubba Watson has. Um, and it's really tough because he has shown us you know, the match play, the deep run at the match play, the deep run at the team event. He had a, a top 25, essentially finished 26th at the Masters. This is this is building something if you are uh, Bubba Watson, and it might not be building towards victory, but it's certainly worth a second look on your betting card or a second look at someone in your lineup. Denny McCarthy is next. He's 80 to one. And I think we have to do a little story time on Denny McCarthy. So for those of you who are not completely aware of Denny, he is uh, one of, if not the best putter on planet earth. He is always near the top of uh, strokes gained putting for a season and things like that. He's just an, an excellent uh, a sh a flat stick guy. Okay. So what happened in, in the summer of 2020 is he started to turn the corner with with his irons, with his approach game. That is something that he had struggled with previously. And when he started to do that, he started to tap into the upside. We saw him have a top 10 at the Wyndham Championship. He played well, finished sixth at the Sanderson Farms, and he finished fourth into the fall uh, at the Bermuda Championship. And we don't have strokes gained data from that, but the other two, he had gained strokes on approach. So we were really, really bullish about what Denny McCarthy was turning into. And then he kind of lost those gains. Between you know the Houston Open and maybe Genesis or the Arnold Palmer Invitational, uh, he wasn't very good on approach. But here we go. 
we are starting to see those gains again. He has now gained strokes on approach in four consecutive events. It's not much, but when you're Denny McCarthy, you don't have to gain much in other categories when you are as good of a putter and as good of a short game player as he is. And now he's got a 13th place finish at the at the RBC, a third place at the Honda Classic. He hasn't missed a cut in five straight. This is setting up to be something right now. It's now a thing for Denny McCarthy. So if he can continue to be the best putter on the planet, if he can just uh, be a zero or a slightly better than zero approach player and get around with the driver and just do other things okay, he can contend. And that's what we're starting to see out of Denny McCarthy for this week. All right, here we go. Phil Mickelson, 175 to 1. Uh, the last time we saw Phil was a 21st at the Masters. And this was a bit of a surprise that he was going to play this event because he has not played this event since 2004. 17 years ago. Think about that. Uh, but what Phil is doing on the course, he's probably dying to get a tee time somewhere because he has now gained strokes on approach in four consecutive starts and in five of his last six. And in those last four, he has been a slightly better than average driver of the golf ball. Those two things, those are two components that we have not seen from Phil Mickelson in a very long time. About Two and a half years, no, not nearly two and a half, two plus years since uh, Feb January and February of 2019. That is the last time we saw Phil Mickelson kind of throw out the metrics that we are seeing this week. Now, uh, around the green is going to be important, so he's going to have to uh, harness some of that Mickelson magic that we have seen countless times over his career. But if he drives the ball and keeps it in play like he has for four consecutive starts and he hits his irons as well as he has for five out of six, Phil can make a lot of noise here. Maybe he gets lucky. The stars align for him and he can win, but he's certainly a guy that I think is undervalued. And finally, also at 175 to one, he's $7,300 on DraftKings. It's Peter Uline. And, you know, uh, he has been splitting his time from the Corn Ferry Tour to the PGA Tour, but it doesn't matter where he's playing. He's playing well. So if you look at his last five starts across both tours, he has a win, a runner-up, a third, and a 22nd. He was excellent with Richie Warinsky. That's who he played with at the Zurich Classic last week. And they were phenomenal in the alternate shot portion uh, uh, like historically good, like the third best alternate shot score we've ever seen in that uh, in that format. And when you go as low as they did in alternate shot, it's because both of those guys are really on top of their game, putting themselves in good positions, giving themselves plenty of birdie looks. It's impressive. It's incredibly impressive. And I also saw Peter Uline when he won out here in Vegas a couple uh, two weeks ago at Paiute. I was following him around. He looked awesome. So this is not only. Uh, looking good on paper. It's looking good to my eyes. Uh, it's it's a lot of good things for Peter Uline right now, and there's certainly few guys that are going to be as motivated uh, as Uline is because, remember, they he got into this event uh, from that top 10 last week, and if he finishes in the top 10 this week, he gets another start on the PGA Tour. This is what guys try to do. They try to build this momentum. They try to pile up these top 10s, make sure they continue to get in the following week and, and see what can happen. Maybe you get lucky and earn your tour card while you're up here. So uh, Uline's not going to give up on us on a Sunday. He's not going to give up on us on a Saturday if things start going sideways. And, and I really like the way that he is playing. So for me, 175 to one, much too long and a really good value in DFS for Peter Uline. All right, that'll do it for my top five sleepers for this week's Valspar Championship. Hopefully just an opportunity to allow you uh, to give a second look or a third look to some of these guys and see if they're a good fit for what you're looking for. Who'd I miss? Tweet me, at Rick Run Good. Leave a comment below, and uh, best of luck this week.